Nibble Nib- Nib- Nibbing Club. Nib- nibble Nibbing Club? Nibble Nibbing Nib- 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 I tried. Thanks for joining the Escape With Me book club. Escape with me, Lizzie Sawyer. And me, Sam Reiner. Into our most recent read. Come with us as we evade reality and go into detail about a new book. We're going to be covering it from beginning to end, so remember, there will be spoilers. Today we're going to Arborville, New Jersey. Pamela Patterson is the humble editor of a crafting magazine and a member of the local Knit and Nibble Knitting Club. When she invites a friend from her past to join, she ends up being tossed into a game of murder and small town politics. With the aid of her best friend, Bettina, and a new little friend, Katerina, she searches for the murderer of a once dear friend. So today's book is a me pick. I actually found it when I was perusing a bookstore because the mall opened at 10 but the bookstore opened at nine. And so I had some time to kill and I was checking out the mysteries and this one caught my eye because it had yarn on it. Gotta love that yarn. And that's all it takes is me really. Yep, yarn. Those are my standards. It has yarn related. I want to know about it. Yeah. But I read the back of the book and I was like, I want to read this later. And now I have a book podcast. So ha ha ha, I win. You do, you win. <laughs> I win. To judge a book by its cover. That's basically what stuck out to me. I looked over, there was a murder mystery book that had yarn on it. It had a knitting pun and there was also a cute cat. We are there. That is all it took. I was like, yes. So I figured the person was a knitter because you can see knitting needles. I thought there was going to be a cat partner, which no, actually for the most part, it's getting Katarina to trust her. So maybe Katarina becomes a part in later. I think Katarina becomes a bigger part later on. This is just a, this is how I acquired the cat book. Very patiently. It was very realistic. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that. It was very realistic. Very. You never forget that Pamela is feeding the cat. Props for that though. It's very realistic. Yay for realism. Woo. But I figured there would be a lot more knitting than there was. But I guess there was a large amount of knitting per capita compared to other books. Hey, they talked about knitting a lot. That's what I thought from the cover. Is there's going to be a cat partner and there's going to be a lot of knitting. What was yours? Kind of similar. It's going to be uh, about a woman that knits and a knitting group and there's a murder and maybe the group will solve the murder together and there's a cat. And I honestly was kind of expecting the cat to be like Coco from the Cat Who books. Exactly. That's what I thought. That is not the case. No. Katerina is much more, I don't want to say realistic, because Coco is also realistic, but is it less involved? Much less involved, yes. I think the only thing that is relevant is at one point the cat takes the thing off the porch and that's how she finds the body. Yes. Now we join Pamela as she's taking her morning walk to the co-op, which by the way, oh my goodness, the amount of trips this woman took to that store. A lot. So much. I feel like I had been to the co-op by the end of this. You didn't go to the co-op? No. Everybody went to the co-op. I know. I don't know. Like I said, I feel like by the end of the book, I had been to it. She had described it in such detail. This place matters a lot. And if it doesn't become a murder scene in one of the later books, I'm actually going to be disappointed. But this author, oh my goodness. I looked her up because I read her little thing on the back of the book. And most of the time, it's very general on those things. It might mention some of their work that talk about their family or whatever. But this author, oh my goodness, she's very decorated. She has a lot of awards. She's been on a lot of panels. She's really involved in CozyCon, which is a convention for cozy mystery lovers and writers in that community. Her website, her author website is the cutest website I have ever seen in my life. The background is a knitting pattern and she has a whole section about cooking and her recipes. And then she has a section about knitting where she talks about vintage knitting bags and finding these really cool things from like 1930 to use to knit. That's cool. She's somebody that I think I would love to get to know and hang out with, which makes me feel a little bad that we're reviewing this book because the theme is usually that we end up making fun of the book, at least to some extent, because no book can be perfect and you might as well be entertained while talking about it. So totally not something personal because I would want to go to one of these co- cons and get her to sign my book. I think she as a person is a super awesome person. But all of that being said, I have some mixed feelings on this book. I didn't like it. I don't know. There 
were some really, really good things. And then there were some things like, ooh, I have to say, all of my favorite mystery series, except for the Cat Who series, I hate the main character. This is a trend, apparently. Pamela is just kind of the worst. I don't hate her. I was just really bored for most of the book. There are very specific things that tip me off on her, but just to get this out of the way, Pamela is a Karen. I expect her to ask for somebody's manager at some point. She is a busybody. She is super judgmental of other people. It's all up in everybody's business. Is mm, <laughs> Mind your business! And you don't figure it out until like halfway through the book. And it becomes a sudden realization of, oh my goodness, the main character is a Karen. Because <laughs> she saw it off being this cute little lady whose daughter went off to college. Her husband passed away. She's making it in the world. But once she becomes part of the murder investigation. The sister even comes over. You thought I did it, didn't you? One of the trends that I thought was the funniest thing is every time she comes across anyone even remotely related to it, they are the worst person. They're a murderer. She just knows it. And then as soon as they're cleared, she's like, I'm glad they're cleared. I really like them. You don't, though. Oh my gosh. It happened three times. Three separate times where she immediately cleared it because it happened with Karen. Then it happened with the lady for, with the knitting store and then it happened with Dory. She's like, I'm glad they're cleared. I really like them. No, you don't. <laughs> 20 minutes ago, you were totally willing to fork them over to the police and now you're like, I'm just so glad. I found your knitting needles, but only one of them. You clearly did it. Oh my gosh, the amount she was ready to just fork it over on her friend. And then in the beginning, they do a good job of making her semi-suspicious with the knitting needle. It's like, okay, let's start talking about suspects. I don't think it's if Karen did it, she would say she had metal knitting needles. Roland asked, hey, can I have them? And then she searched her bag. If she had done it, she really easily could have been like, I left them at home or I returned them or have a reason that they're not there other than, oh, I can't find them in my bag. Nope. Oh, well, I guess I did it. Clearly. I'm actually a little surprised Pamela wasn't able to tell the difference between the knitting needle that she found and the one in Amy. Hey, man, Silver knitting needles all look the same if they're the same thickness, especially the metal ones. They're all the same. And how are police supposed to tell them apart? They're not. She made it seem like, oh, as soon as the police see it. She's a busybody. She was like, oh my goodness, the police will know. And I'm like, yeah, but they won't though, because you bought this at the same craft hobby store that she did. And it's, good job, you found a knitting needle. How wonderful. And then as soon as she finds the second one, she acts all relieved. And I believe that. That one was a reason one. Okay, we're gonna get to some ones that it got ridiculous and maybe she should have focused on the suspects she had and not brandishing it to the world. Especially considering who did it in the end. But that's Karen. Her whole thing is her husband worked at the college and then Amy became the, I want to say the director? Director of arts, I think. Head of professional arts and I'm confused why she wasn't the dean? of the college. I have issues with some of that. You work at a college, you know. I do know. And so there were issues and we'll get to that. Anyway, for some reason, because she's the head of this, she is able to fire someone from a completely different department. I took it as she was the head of the College of Professional Arts. And that's why I'm like, why isn't she a dean? Why are you the head? But whatever, not going into this. She was a professor of interior design. And then she was the head of professional arts, which was a college. So she should have been a dean anyway. And then he was... I didn't even write it down. It just said works at Wendell staff. And so she decided to not renew his contract, which I guess he wasn't there very long, which makes sense. From my understanding, it was she was on the council and they were like, do we rehire this dude? And she was like, I don't think so. And they were like, oh, yeah, you're right. No, I have no idea. But anyway, that is kind of accurate. If you've only worked there for a year, you get a shorter amount of, hey, heads up, you're not working with us than if they worked there for a long time. So it sounds like they didn't renew the contract and they let him 
them know in plenty of time that, hey, we're not renewing your contract. And so that was her motive is she was really mad because her husband lost her job and they might lose their house. And that's a decent one. And then Dory Morgan was also a really decent one. She was Amy's jealous sister and she'd been overshadowed by her her whole life. Her husband is in love with her. Her parents, which sounds kind of like she's the golden child. It's very messy. I wish they had actually spent more time on Dory. She had too many suspects. So many. Everybody did it. They all colluded together to do it. Every gosh darn person, the doctor dude and the sister and the husband of the sister and your neighbor Karen (laughs) and the lady down the street that looked at you funny. They all colluded together and the woman at the store store across town that's obviously selling drugs. Oh my gosh. And the turkeys that walk down the street. Oh, they are definitely in on it. That didn't really have any purpose at all. They did it. They definitely did it. And you know what? The cat. The cat too. The cat also did it. We'll find that out in book three though. So Dory was a good suspect. Her husband was not a good suspect. It was, hey, you're clearly in love with her. Obviously that means you murdered her. Because that's what people in love do. Oh. Obviously. They didn't even make it a reasonable fatal attraction thing. It was literally just, oh, you were in love with her. Clearly you killed her. Unrequited love. Obviously you killed her because she didn't love you back. Clearly. No, with fatal attraction, there needs to be a little bit of unhinged. Like something isn't right. I mean, technically, yeah, she didn't love him back, but he wasn't making a move either. Even the art director was like, yeah, he was in love with him, but he's faithful to his wife. So it wasn't good, but at least it was something. Because then we get into Dr. Randolph. (laughs) Poor man. She's all up in his business and he's like, I just want to marry my boyfriend and work my job. Why can't you just leave me alone? I know. His great sin is having Argyle socks. How dare he? Did we ever actually find out who she made the socks for? Oh my goodness, you're right. Oh, I'm so mad. You're welcome. They made such a big deal about that. (laughs) It helps there were two extra chapters with just random stuff in it. I'm so mad. Why? Why was that such... No. Uh, No. If you have a gun drawn in the first act, it needs to be shot off by the third one. I am so mad. You're welcome. I didn't even notice that. I'm mad at myself. I'm mad at the character. I'm mad at everybody. Oh my goodness, you're right. Dang. Well, anyway, going back to the doctor. This poor man, this is when you figure out that she's a Karen should sue for harassment. She follows him around the store, watching his socks, whatever. But she tries to illegally obtain his work schedule. And then she happened, I don't know, I would have, if I were him, I would have been mad at her too, because he's straight up following her and trying to get his schedule and then clearly thinks he's a suspect, but won't come out and say it. His only sin was having handmade Argyle socks and living in the same... That were from his aunt or his grandmother or something. It was his mom! Yeah. What? Clearly no one else in the world can make Argyle socks but Amy. Obviously. Heaven forbid. Which, now that I think about it, there's also the thing of why did Amy lie? about her knitting skill. That never came up either. Because when she started, she said, hey, I'm starting to knit. And then they found out later, they find the book with all the really complicated patterns. It was like, oh, why does she have all of these? Oh, I didn't even notice that. What the heck? She wanted to be included and didn't want to show off her. She's being humble. I mean, and they talk about that later, about her being humble. Because she has to be the oh-so-perfect sister that the other sister hates. I mean, if she's lying about her skill and then is gonna whip out these argyle socks i'd be a little pissed too after a while i'm willing to bet she wasn't gonna whip out the argyle socks first go oh yeah apparently she's never making those again i mean me too oh my goodness i wanted to learn to knit to make socks and this book taught me that that's a dumb idea (laughs) not for your first knitting socks are hard and that was a dumb decision on my part but i have learned so maybe i can actually make something normal and learn how to knit instead of focusing on socks. Anyway, Dr. Randolph has a really, really weak tie to him. And it doesn't make sense because Amy just moved into the area. 
So she would have just met him recently, so it, it didn't make sense. No. Olivia Wiggins. Okay, so this, this is where I have an issue. Because they all claim, oh, she was next in line. She was the one who's supposed to get it. But Olivia Wiggins only has a master's degree. Oh, I know who we're talking about now. We're good. Yes, so she is the one who wanted the position and like all the students are protesting that she should get it. Which we never come back to. Oh my gosh, yes. It's a random knitting college girl and we never come back to her, ever. Neither of them. It's, it's oh my goodness. Anyway. They come up on a suspect list later and they're like, hey, these are still suspects. No, they're not. That's pretty much it. But the protest is that Amy got the job. Amy has a lot of life experience, actual on-the-job experience. Plus, she came from a good college and if she had a master's, having that real-life experience would make up for it somewhat. But it makes it sound like Olivia got a master's degree from the university. Yep. So that means that that college has doctorate level professors on staff to teach the master's program. So obviously there are more qualified people than Olivia. So why is everyone trying to say that Olivia is the only person that should have gotten the job? No clue. It didn't make sense. Because the students like her and they'd rather her do it. Also, some people just need to fight the man. So Olivia Wiggins, actually, the herd plot line makes no sense. And it doesn't come up again. Yeah. And it's what, like five pages? It's not something worth murdering someone over either. You got my job. Die. Yeah, it sounds like she's much younger than him. Like I said, she's not as qualified. So they obviously looked over her. Give it five years get more experience, you can get it. It's fine. And never came up again. The knitting student, though, she was unhinged. If they came back and it was that student, I totally would have believed it because she has this 18th century torture device so she can knit while walking because knitting is life. I thought that was cool and was like, I wonder if I could get one of those for crocheting. You can walk while crocheting. That's not a big issue. No, but I thought it was cool. It was cool, but it was a little unhinged to have it at a protest, claim she couldn't stop knitting because she's protesting. And when another knitter is like, hey, why are you doing this? She's like, knitting is life. This is the only way. Okay. That's not how I took that. It was a little troublesome. But yeah, like you said, it would have been interesting if they didn't immediately drop it. If you're at a protest and it's something that's been going on for weeks and you know you're going to be there all day, why not bring your knitting? I don't know. Just the situation, it was really obvious. The author was trying to make her as obvious as possible. Like, look, this student knits. That's fair. Yeah, it was very much a, oh, another suspect that we're never going to talk about ever again or even mention even once, but she's a suspect. Which, given the author's background, I totally believe she just has, like, this random amount of knowledge of, like, 18th century knitting stuff. When was it ever said that it was 18th century? She just said it was from the time where women couldn't walk to the store without doing something. And so that made me think like 18th century, like a ridiculously long time ago. Because like I said, she just gave the when women couldn't walk to the store without doing something because it was the devil's work. And I was like, okay, it's a really long time ago. I thought when she came up to her, she'd be like, why are you doing this? I was half expecting it to either be a statement. Amy died with the knitting needles. And so now she's knitting and it was like a statement or something. But it was. It was just knitting his life, fam. Yeah, bro. A little disappointed. And she doesn't even have a name. I had to go through all my notes. I write down every named character. Where is this character? I remember she was not named. It was just the knitting student. Yep. Which, speaking of suspects that weren't named, let's get to the worst of them. The yarn store owner. Oh, yeah, she didn't have a name either. I wanted to strangle Pamela every time she was like, clearly she's having fertility issues and she needs the yarn for fertility rituals because that's what people in Peru in ancient times used to do. She got that idea from her magazine. It was such a dumb theory and she kept saying it like this is totally viable and then at one point the yarn store owner's like no i just wanted the yarn back because it was made of my dog which 
why did you bring it to the store? Beside the point. Maybe she was going to make something with it. And that's why she brought it to the store. I'm knitting on the job. Okay, that makes sense. But Vecino was like, hey, that fertility version. And Pamela's like, yeah, it was pretty stupid, wasn't it? I was like, yes. Every time you mentioned it, I got so mad. Oh my goodness. I didn't really care one way or another. I was just really bored. And then I was kind of mad at the ending. Yes, I was very mad at the ending. Because I hate whenever authors keep going, give you just enough to make it sense, and then at the end whip out this other character and you don't actually have enough clues to be able to piece it together. I kind of hate that. It's like, give me a chance. Honestly, this feels like a cheating ending. This character that I've pulled out of nowhere, it's them. Since when? Where... What? I mean, I know they're a character, but they have no motive. This is their motive. What? Okay. Which, on a side note, could we talk about how this woman got plastic surgery, legally changed her name, but kept her name, her legal name, was a double name. It was Tracy Jean Slade. And so she's like, I've got the perfect name to change it to, Jean. And I'm going to move one town away. They will never find me. Never, ever, 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 never. You are the dumbest person. And plus, in all of that feistiness, when her husband finds her in the koi pond, she immediately gives up. And I'm like, no, no, that's the perfect time. It's your word against her. She's holding the gun. Yeah, be like, Pamela came in accusing me of things. It's hard. No, she like gave up and she was like, I'm not the person you think I am. And even the whole time he's acting like, what is happening? This is weird. Oh no! Also, it was weird that she specifically spent so much time talking about Jean's heel and Slade. I thought she was going to hit her then, but no, she gets her heel out, she walks forward, and then Pamela distracts her with a question. Were you trying to make page count? What was that? Yep. Well, I mean, she went on for two chapters after that. She's definitely just trying to make page count. Which, on a side note, who is Harold? In the beginning of the book, they're talking about their Thanksgiving plans, and Ronald the Camp says, hey, if you don't have anything to do, you and Penny can come have Thanksgiving Thanksgiving with me and Harold. So this entire book, I thought Ronald was gay. Harold's his dog, isn't it? No, their dog was Ramona. Who's Harold? You get to the end of the book, he finally hosted, which Ronald is my favorite character. Straight out. Yeah, Ronald's great. He tried so hard to make a dessert for the knitting thing, and it's just, it's wonderful. And his wife is so cute, and she's like, it's fine, I just served the middle. And then he worked so hard on that sweater, and you find out it's for his dachshund. No, he messed up, and so it ended up for his dachshund. Oh, okay. I thought it was always meant. I don't know. And then he's in the kitchen, and he's throwing a fit, and his wife's in there. And there's like, knitting has really helped his anger issue. You notice just in time, it's fine. It doesn't even look burnt. It's just the right amount of brown. It was so cute. Anyway, you find out he has a wife named Milani, and their dog is Ramona. Who is Harold? No idea. Maybe his brother. I have no idea. That's going to be, if it doesn't show up in later books, I don't know. Harold is. I got really mad that that never got addressed or came up again. But yeah, so as Jean Worthington, I kind of like that it was a member of the knitting club because you got to know them. It probably would have been a cop-out ending if it was Olivia Wiggins or Karen's husband who you never met. So I did like that. I was expecting it to be the sister, honestly. I was too until they got to the bachelor party, which I'm surprised they didn't confirm the bachelor party. I don't know how they would have confirmed it, but that feels like something you should do. Yeah. Don't take suspects' word for their alibi. Heaven forbid. You tried to illegally obtain a ER doctor's schedule. You can make some calls. Anyway, hear me out. The only clues you have is you hear about Tracy Jean at the funeral with a whole bunch of other people, so it's not suspicious at all. And the only reason I remembered this person is because I write down every single named character. And then your second clue is when she opens her knitting bag, which I thought was a huge thing because it sounded like there was a lot of yarn in it, but come to find out it's something you could carry in one hand. Dang, that's a lot of yarn for a carry-on. But the hint is when they have it at her house, she opens the lid and she sees a bunch of different colors and one of the colors mentioned is gold. And first of all, I'm like, why didn't Pamela notice straight away, hey, that's the 
the yarn. Why did it take her two days? But secondly, you didn't know that any yarn was missing. You don't know that was the yarn. She may have just bought the same kind of yarn. Yeah. And it didn't even necessarily need to be the dog hair yarn. It could have been a different gold yarn. Oh, yeah, it's rare alpaca yarn that I got from such and such a place because it was so pretty. It's a lot like that yarn you showed the other week. Yeah, and it was very, very odd that that was the connection. And so hear me out. What if we're rewriting the story a little bit today. Okay. What if when they were at the yarn store, Pamela mentions, I have four skeins and the yarn store owner suspicious on purpose and doesn't tell her why she wants the yarn back, which is weird. But the yarn store person wants them back, but says I sold her six. Or there were six because she didn't sell it. Yeah. And there were six of them. Six that got sold by the assistant or whatever. That leaves in a mystery for the reader to solve to be like, hey, I want to be on the lookout for this. And so maybe at least it could be some string. So when she mentions there is gold yarn in the thing, you can be like, hmm, I wonder if that's the gold yarn. Because up until that point, you assume... There's only four. Yeah, you assume Pamela has all of it. But no. And you know what was the other thing that was really dumb? Jean kept giving her ways that she could have left. Right? But she decided to be super dumb and to like confront her. Get out. Get out now. What are you doing? Which, okay, I have something that we'll come back to about Penny. Why so many P names? Why so many P names? That was also what I thought. I was like, okay, the last one had a lot of M names. This one has a lot of P names. I don't know what's up with that. I don't understand. And technically there aren't that many, but just the fact that you have the main character and her daughter. And the best friend. The best friend had a B name. Oh, Bettina? Yeah. I was listening to it. I didn't read it. It sounded like a P. I thought it was Bettina. Which is a very interesting name, but whatever. I guess it stands out. So Jean basically catches her and is like, oh, I bought the yarn somewhere else. And then Pamela should have been like, oh, okay, cool, bye. And left and called the cops. But instead, she's like, no, this is the special yarn. And she's like, oh, I bought it at the store. It's like, no, you got it from Amy's knitting bag. What are you doing? Penny has every right to think you should not be involved with this because you are stupid. And at the same time, why did Jean be like, yeah, I totally did it. You got me. Instead of being like, the f*** are you on? What have you been drinking? or smoking. I bought these somewhere else. What is wrong with you? Yeah, she could have made her leave, her ditch the evidence, and then all of a sudden she has no proof. She just, it's her... People take Pamela way too seriously. People take Pamela way too seriously. Pamela takes herself way too seriously. Pamela does take herself way too seriously. And if I hear Penny moan, Mom, one more time, I'm going to throw something. Mom! The beginning of every sentence. (laughs) I have never in my life said, Mom, so many times. I hate Penny. Let me get that out there. Penny's the worst. I thought she was going to be okay and then she wasn't. I think what really got to me is three times in a row, Penny says, stop. And it's the same conversation three times. And then of course, Pam was like, of course I'll stop. And then doesn't stop. Like, you know, she's not going to. Why are you even bothering? It makes Pamela an even worse person. It's not a thing, Penny. I know. I even wrote in my notes. I was like, Penny's boring. The book was boring. And then she straight up lies and she's like, totally I won't do this and you're like you're such a liar she doesn't even try mental gymnastics it she's just like oh I'm just being involved with it you said you wouldn't be involved there was a really weird part on page 228 I'm gonna read the passage to you and I want you to make this make sense I no promises Penny was stretched out on the sofa head on one arm stockinged feet on the other a book was balanced on her chest how? Maybe she had a pillow behind it, balance it up. Otherwise, I've got no clue. It says she has her head on one arm, the arm of the sofa. Yeah. But her chest? It's not even her lap. It's her chest. Maybe she's holding it and she just has it sitting on her chest. I don't know. So that's weird, first of all. But then Pamela walks up. I want to show you something, Pamela said, perching on the edge of the sofa. She was smiling in her excitement about the yarn and her plans for it. She put the bins lid aside and lifted out one of the balls. Isn't this color beautiful? Beautiful. Penny closed the book and lowered it to the floor. Pamela put the ball of yarn on Penny's chest. Feel how soft. 
She stroked the ball and Penny touched it with a tentative finger. This was such an awkward scene. Who does that? I don't know. That was uncomfortable. On another side note, who the heck is funding Bettina's paper? No idea. It goes to the entire town. It's not subscription based. And Bettina makes a salary off of this. Who is funding this? Are the taxpayers funding this? I would be pissed off. Yes. Because the other one is actual news and like they focus on it. Because even Bettina's like, I'm not even trying to get the news because it comes out every Sunday. No point in trying. I'd be so mad. And it even says most weeks it stays on people's driveway. Don't always tell you, man. She getting paid from somewhere. I have no idea who's funding this. It makes no sense. Some billionaire's wife decided she wanted to start a paper and so he's funding the whole thing while she's having fun. Yeah. <laughs> I got no clue, man. But another part, I'm actually very impressed with the amount of technology that is in this, which is saying something about some co- mystery writers. It's just, it's very sad. It's very sad. So I was impressed with the amount of use of technology, but it was very presumptuous. At one point, they decide, oh, Maple Branch has another newspaper just like Patina's that they just throw out there, I guess, taxpayer dollars rip. But they decide, obviously, a throwaway free newspaper must have the funding to also have an online archive that they provide to people for free. For sure. Paid subscription newspapers have a hard enough time and you totally have to pay for them. It's really obnoxious. That was very presumptuous. They were very lucky. Clearly they needed that plot point. It's the only way to make the bad guy clearly the bad guy. Another thing I didn't understand is Bettina throws her phone at Pamela and then at the site it makes it very obvious that Pamela pulled out Bettina's cell phone. Where is her cell phone? I don't know what's happening. Also, I hate the love interest. I just, why can't people just be interested in love? Why does she have to be so mean to him? That is when the Karen moment happened, when she decided, hey, he has trash on his lawn. I'm tired of looking at it. I'm going to write him a note and put it in his mailbox. How dare you? But then he comes back and is like, oh, I didn't know about raccoons. Yeah, but you had trash in your yard for days. You totally knew about the trash in your yard. And he put out a second trash can. And so she's like, obviously he has seen the trash. Two of his daughters have come and visited and neither of them had said a thing about the trash? Uh. Okay, first of all, I knew they were her daughters. Well, yeah! That was so obvious. She was such a presumptuous little mm, on that. Obviously, they're girlfriends. Oh my gosh. But she was kind of right about the trash. (laughs) I hate to say it, but dude, I was expecting him to be a disabled man. Like, he can't do it himself or something. And those were nurses or something. That was the only thing that I could ration. But as soon as he immediately went out and picked up the trash and was like, like, you know what? This lady's actually very cute. Mm. Oh, and then to really make me mad, those two extra chapters, and instead of one being, oh, she goes over and meets his daughters and talks to him. She super doesn't, yeah. She takes a nap, and in the rudest way possible, I'm not going. I need to nap. You're just being mean to him. You don't even need to like him, but at least be nice. No. The dude has done nothing to you, but you're so angry. First of all, if you don't want to be matched up, be like, hey, stop. I don't want to be matched up, but there's no reason to be mean to the dude. You can even go up to him and be like, hey, I'm only interested in friendship, and he probably would be fine. He seems like a reasonable, nice dude, and he's really cool. It would have been cool to have that neighbor, but no, she's just mean because that's apparently her personality now. She just needs to nap. I just want to nap. Why can't you just let me nap? She wasted an entire chapter on her napping. Yes. I'm mad. Rightfully so. This is not enemies to lovers. This is, she is a jerk. Why did you like her? Very different. Yes. Enemies to lovers is when they have a personality clash or an objective mismatch. Not, he is super nice to me, so I hate him. I was half expecting her to say he was too attractive. Like, some other books we know. You're too handsome, so I hate you. Oh my goodness. But it ends and super corny and I actually did love that we got to see a time at Roland's because Roland is my favorite character and now his wife is my second favorite character, but also the dog is adorable. The dog is adorable. But it ends with a super cheesy line and I'm like, okay, fine. That's, that's pretty. 
standard fare for cozy mysteries. Yeah, whatever. I have such mixed feelings about this book. There were some really cool ideas in it. And I think it was an awesome premise. I think it started out pretty strong, mainly because the murder happened pretty quickly. And she reacted to finding a dead Bardi like a normal person, unlike most of these books, where they're totally fine and chill and it's it's cool. They're just going to solve a mystery now. It was a really loose connection between Pamela and the mystery. At the beginning, it was like, oh, I need to figure it out because it's Amy. But at some point, the police weren't incompetent. They were totally searching things. It was just, oh, something. Sometimes the police don't ask the right questions. Yep. Hey, busybody, mind your business. But obviously I'm going to. No, you ain't. Mind your business. She didn't, clearly. Ugh, she's very pretentious. She didn't ask the right questions, though. She happened to notice that the person in her knitting club had the same yarn as the yarn that she now had. Which she should have noticed earlier. Imagine if she was sitting there and called her out. You would have had witnesses then, at least. Yes. But also she's rich, so I wouldn't be surprised if she goes to all natural yarn shops in the city. Excuse the pun, but the thread was really weak there. I take it back. I intend the pun. I am strong, independent woman. Puns take a decent amount of intelligence. Aww. I don't understand why people hate them so much. You have to be smart to come up with a good pun. I think the problem is a lot of them aren't good. You have to be intelligent to come up with a good pun. So some really minor stuff. She talks about a person who was in the same social circles of this really famous architect who I really love the work of. But how old would this textile worker be? Because this book came out in 2018. And and the dude died in 1959. Pretty old. So they would have to be at least 80 for it to be presumable that they were in the same social circles as a 20 year old, as this very old and famous man. Probably. So that's a very small one. Pamela really needs help. I'm convinced at the end she was isolating herself and had symptoms of depression. Just the way she reacted to him, I'm kind of on their side. She's clearly not chill with being single. She acts like, I want to stay single, but it's really clear that she's not chill with it. But she doesn't want to admit it, and she just needs therapy. Her husband died. She's still mourning him five years later. It's totally normal, but she should really get some therapy. Everybody needs a little bit of therapy. Everyone needs a little bit of therapy, and this is a totally viable thing. Her husband died suddenly. That's a lot. She became a single mother all at once. Get some therapy. Get some help. That's okay. Just please become a better person. Mind your own business. You know she's not though. No. On a side note, I did look at some of the other covers and slowly there becomes more cats. Oh no. So I know for a fact she gets a second one, but then in a later one there's like a third one and then in a one there's like eight. So I'm assuming at some point she does some sort of charity thing for cats. Like those aren't all hers. But I feel like over time she just starts collecting these cats. And we're seeing the beginnings of the crazy cat lady. And then she hoards the cats and then it spirals from there. And that's why she and Rick never date. Although I do admit it would be super weird to start dating someone from the same profession. He's an architect though. That's a pretty niche profession. So it's totally okay to be like, I'm not comfortable taking someone from the same profession. But she would have to be more in touch with her own feelings to be able to admit that. Gasp. What is that? Feelings? No. I gotta be in everybody else's business. Speaking of feelings, Penny totally has a thing for Kyle. Mom, he's not my boyfriend. All she asks is if he likes apples. He's not my boyfriend. But you know him well, like he's your friend. But you want him to be. You clearly want him to be. You've said it three times. Mom, he's not my boyfriend. Okay, Penny. Hey, does he like mayonnaise? Mom, he's not my boyfriend. I wouldn't know that. Okay, cool. I'll make one with and one out. Does he like apples? Mom, he's not my boyfriend. That's not what I asked. I asked if he liked apples. Mm. Does he like apples, child? Sit down. <laughs> Literally not asking. You. Mom, he's not my boyfriend. Mm. Yeah, but he's your friend. Do you know if your friend likes apples? I know my friends like apples slash doesn't like apples, depending on the friend. I feel like if she turned back around and was like, hey, does your friend Lori like apples? She wouldn't be like, mom, she's not my girlfriend. <laughs> Penny was the worst. She was a distraction from the mystery at best. 
and an obstruction from interesting things at worst. I didn't find the book interesting at all, so... You have to admit, it came to a slamming halt when Penny showed up. It did, yes. That it did. I mean, I'd already lost interest, and then I was like, cool, why am I listening to this? And it would have been interesting if maybe Penny was interested in it. That's cool, Mom. Cool, but be careful, because I don't want you to die. But no, we get three scenes of her telling her not to, two scenes of her telling her to date the neighbor. Thanksgiving. A scene of her being kind of a brat and deciding college kids don't wear handmade sweaters. And I'm like, you're a little old to be going through that phase. Most people would have that in high school, but I guess you were sheltered. And then a scene of her being like, nah, it's totally cool. Someone else has given me outside vindication that wearing handmade sweaters is cool. Isn't that also a high school thing? Yes, it's very, you're a little old, Penny, but okay. Like I said, she came from a very small town. She could just be that sheltered. It sounds like she had one friend. And then, I don't know, there was the whole Thanksgiving scene and I think it would have been better if it was characters we already knew but it was all of that and it had nothing to do with anything also way too many people cool with Penny's underage drinking yup her mom coming back and she's like I'm gonna have a drink of wine and she's like mom I'm in college now I'm like you're 18 and yes it is legal I did check in New Jersey because some places it's still not legal, but it is legal that you can have at 18 some with adult supervision or an adult over the legal drinking age. But there are so many people who are like, hey, you're in college. Here's some wine. Hey, you left the house. Have some alcohol. They drank a whole bottle. I didn't drink a whole bottle until like three years ago. It was actually kind of frightening because you know she hadn't eaten that entire day because she was traveling. And then to come home and the first thing they do is drink a whole whole bottle and they're just like oh they were feeling slightly tipsy i'm like this is an 18 year old short tiny girl okay but i have and i know i'm tall and much heavier but i have drinking an entire bottle of wine and not felt very drunk however it was a very cheap bottle of very fruity wine and so the alcohol content was very very low so it is feasible <laughs> That she drank a whole bottle of wine. But to not have any food that day, except for maybe breakfast, and then to come home and drink potentially half a bottle, because her mom also had some, of wine on an empty stomach at 18, where she is short and tiny. No. Maybe she has a good tolerance. I don't know. The first time? Well, although she did kind of make it sound like she probably had, because she's in college, so clearly it's fine. It's fine. But she's not underage drinking, you know, it's totally cool. That was weirdly okay. And that's another thing, because Cozy Mysteries, normally it's like, you're not 21, shut up, go sit down. So it was weird to hear an older woman be like, yeah, you're in college, please drink. And it wasn't even a, I'd rather you have your first drinking experience with me so you know what your limit is. It was literally, let's just drink as much as we want. And then they go to Thanksgiving, here's an entire bottle. This is fine. It's not dull. What are you doing? That was an adjustment. I guess that's how they be in New Jersey. I don't no. I don't live in New Jersey. I don't know. Not from the South. I got no clue. Oh, well. But overall, you were definitely bored. I didn't like this book. I'm pretty used to cozy mysteries. I think I'm starting to grow out of them a little bit because I've seen the trope so many times of animal sidekick. It's usually a woman and she acts like an old lady, whatever age. So it's kind of nice that this was an elderly lady. Don't get me started on the 30 year old who refused to get a cell phone until 2010 because who needs those gosh darn gadgets. Cell phone? What? How is that useful? Clearly it's just people trying to keep tabs on me. <laughs> Not to mention the countless times you've always been murdered and wanted to call the police, but okay. You're clearly written by a 70 year old woman. Anyway. The animal sidekick, which like I said, it's a little different because it doesn't really have that active of a role. Having a cutesy job. I don't know. A lot of the tropes are starting to wear on me. When it first started, I was like, oh my god, this is my mom. It's the same job my mom has. It's things that my mom would do. And then we got into it and I was like, this is not my mom. <laughs> when it started straight up, I was like, this is the person I want to be. Oh, you want to be my mom? <laughs> I want to be the person to adapt all these stray cats and spend her days editing for a crafting magazine. That's something I used to do. I used to be an editor. That sounds awesome. But then you got to know her. 
I wanted to like this book a lot because like I've said, I have so much mad respect for this author who clearly knows her stuff and has written other series that are also highly acclaimed. And I don't know, something just broke down in all of this. There are too many characters. She's stretched too thin. She looks like a lunatic at several points with how many suspects she has and how weak their claims are. None of them actually really get investigated it's just like a convenience thing. It doesn't feel like they did anything. It just feels like things fell into their lap. The red herrings weren't good. They weren't practical. I wanted so much better. I will probably actually keep reading the series in hopes that it gets better because like I said, I am a masochist and will read books that I hate because I want to know what happens next. But I don't think it'll be popping back up in the podcast unless I read this and I'm like, okay, it gets so much better, I promise. But I might test the waters on that a little bit more. Good luck. So beside being bored, any general thoughts? The main character, I mean, I didn't care and I still don't care. She loses your sympathy. It starts out and it's like this woman, she has a cool job and she meets this person and it brings up some hard memories about her husband passing away five years ago. And then over time you learn like, oh, you're just a, you're just a little unhinged and definitely need a therapist. Yeah, she definitely is a therapist. I really wish we'd come back around to the college girl. Right? Because that I was mildly interested in and she she never came up again. I wish we'd spent more time with the sister because I was interested in her and she didn't really come up again. I mean, I'm interested in anybody that's like, I just let myself in your household. That's cool. The first time she met her, she was crawling through the hedges. Yeah, she's hecka suspicious. I want to spend more time with her. I want to get to know her. She seems like fun. She carves ice for a living. That's fun. And she has such this harsh personality. And the whole thing with the funeral, it sets her up to be such more interesting character. And it's just, she was interesting. That was fun. The husband was interesting. That was also fun. I liked the ripped up painting. That was a nice little touch that didn't really go anywhere at all. And But we spend so much time with the random yarn lady and the knitting students in the school angle. Beside the reason it's not really that plausible, it's just too much. She was spread too thin. She looked like a crazy person. She loses your sympathy because she's kind of a jerk and a busybody. She straight up lies to her daughter and doesn't even try to make amends with that. The daughter totally lets it go. I would have been pissed. You told me you wouldn't and you got held up by gunpoint. I'd be mad. Yeah, I'd be livid. But no, everything's fine because Pamela's the main character. And so even though at the end, she's very rude. It's all good. In the next book, I'm sure Rick will be desperately vying for her attention. Oh, definitely. He's a love interest. Always vying for the attention. Because main character. You don't even know why other than the author told you to. Sorry, I'm imagining The Sims when you really want these two people to get together. And you're like, no, stop. Go talk to him. Yeah. Yes. Do not stop talking to him. Flirt with him now. And the Sims like, why? I am starving and need to pee really badly. I want to go make pizza. <laughs> no. I want to sit in the corner and listen to music. I want to walk outside and pet the random dog. Yeah, I love Sims. But also it feels kind of Simish to be like, no, don't you pick up trash. You focus on getting better at woodwork. <laughs> you have to improve so you can get promoted. You want to mop? You can't mop. Why is there water on the floor to begin with what did you do what do you mean there's a ghost <laughs> and then you find out the neighbor that you're flirting with walks by and gets like negative emotions because you see the trash and you're like oh crap fine go clean it go clean it but then come back and woodwork okay so officially we just need to pitch this we need a simulation cozy mystery <laughs> solver where you could be the detective like that just needs to happen now they did a getting to work detective thing where you solve murder so clearly this can happen. It's totally. Pitching this to Maxis. Come here, EA. I want a meeting. So what is your one question for the author? Now that we've gone on a tangent. Why did you have so many suspects 
when you didn't need this many. She really didn't. I don't understand why you decided that you needed this many people to be suspicious. And I know it's a cozy mystery thing to have a lot of suspects, but a lot of them have like 350 pages. And so they actually dive into each person. And so a red herring plays out. But this, it really does. And they didn't come up again. And I'm still mad about the fertility ritual. <laughs> I'm so mad. It's a fertility ritual. <laughs> How do you know she's having fertility issues? Well, clearly she's an older woman. She could have kids. You don't know. You're so presumptuous. Way to assume. <laughs> you thought. You thought. This is a series. Why this story idea? I mean, clearly this is a very close to home thing because the character bakes and she bakes and she knits and the character knits. And I get that. And I'm wondering if this was like a write what you know. But she also has a series where it's the main character is a bluegrass musician, which is, I think that's pretty cool. That's not your typical murder mystery person. So I'm curious why it's like, I'm going to go in on a series and she goes in hard on this series. It's, it's the main thing about her now. So I'm wondering why this setup. I'd be curious to know. Maybe she was like, I really have all this baking and knitting stuff in my brain that I want to share. And that's how things like learning about women that you walk while knitting comes up and weird facts about Peruvian fertility rituals. I wonder if that's how this pops up. She's like, I have all of these things that I know and I need other people to know them. I mean, maybe. <laughs> but also I want to know who Harold is. Who is Harold? Who is Harold? Why does he matter? Seriously, for the entire book, I thought he was gay. But no, the doctor was gay. I did like that because the entire time I was like, oh, that's kind of sucks. It would have been cool if he was straight and into knitting and then you find out he is straight into knitting and then I'm like, but who is Harold? Okay, honest to goodness, the bit where Penny was like, like, Mom, I have something I need to tell you. And she talks about not wearing the knitted sweaters anymore. Honest to goodness, the way that started, I was like, she's going to be like, Mom, I'm dating that friend that I've been going out and hanging out with. She's my girlfriend. I'm gay. That would have been interesting. And I thought that's what that was building to. And it didn't. And I was like, oh. No, I thought it was going to be she was going to come forward with some sort of clue. Like she knew something. But no, it was dumb. And it had a build to it, too. It was like, Mom, I have to tell you something. Well, technically, this had a build, too. Because Bettina threw that fit because she made all the pink squares. And then they were like, hey, we don't want pink for our baby. Which, granted, they're pretty far into the pregnancy. They probably should have been like, hey, these are the colors we want the baby blanket. But that's beside the point. Just because you've decided your colors years out. Yeah, but they knew the gender at this point. She's almost done with the blanket. Like, it's pretty far along. No, I know. I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> So granted, I get that, but Bettina throws this fit because her daughter, son, I don't know, but her grandchild is a girl, and so she made all these squares for the child to be pink, and then uh, last minute they were like, we don't want pink, and then Pamela was trying to sympathize, and she's like, I'd be really upset if Penny didn't want handmade sweaters for me anymore, and then it pops up, and it's like, Mom, I don't want handmade sweaters anymore, and it's like, oh. That gets more follow-up than most of the suspects. Yup. It's not a good time. And then immediately turns around because, oh my gosh, the cool girl next door totally said it was cute, so it's fine. I need outside validation to confirm my personality still. You don't, though. Be you. You're old enough to realize this. Be you. Which, 18's still young, and so I'm not surprised that she was like, oh, this girl's really cool because she's a career woman. She lives in New York. And New York's a big city, so that's impressive. But just the fact she was like, Mom, it's not cool to wear handmade sweaters. That was a little... I'm going to give it to her because she sounded really sheltered. But it was a little late to be needing the cool kids to tell you what to wear. But that's beside the point. Most college kids I know are usually in sweats anyway, and sweaters are wonderful. <laughs> They're like, I don't care, man. I gotta go to this class, and then I gotta go to the library, and then I need to eat at some point. Yeah. I did college stuff for a bit. Uh, granted, she's in her first semester, which that was the only semester I had any of my crap together. But considering how close she was to finals, she was not panicking nearly enough. No. I have some reading to do. I'm like, no. When you get back, 
You have finals. You have reading to do now. Yeah, and so she reads the book at one point, but then she spends most of the time out with her friend. No, you're not panicking nearly enough for this. Granted, it is the first semester, but yeah, you should definitely be panicking more. And the only reason I give it, hey, this is the first semester, she doesn't know what she's about to walk into. So usually by second semester, people figure out they screwed. Yes, it's nuts. It's intense. I have done it twice now because I'm dumb. You're not dumb. No, I'm not because I managed to get that master's, but I was dumb for being like, you know what sounds good? Having college, but harder. You kind of, yeah. That's fine. Let's get on to ratings. So what's your rating for this? An empty cat food bowl out of three kittens in a blanket. Oh, three kittens in a blanket is adorable. Yeah. And I mean, they kind of correlate, but you know, it doesn't really make sense at the same time. Like this book kind of correlates, but doesn't really make sense. I'd give it learning a new pattern out of 10. There were attempts. There were so many good attempts. But you just got lost somewhere and you really need to start over. I'm hoping the second attempts are better. Because like I said, I had such hopes and aspirations and I really like this author as a person. A little disappointed. And I don't care if I torture myself reading books that I don't like. So I will see what will happen. If not, I'll just put the reviews on our website. And it will be fun. <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. You can keep up to date with us by checking us out on Twitter or Instagram, where we do fun book content. And you can help support our podcast by checking us out on Patreon, where for just $1 a month, you can get access to our bonus episodes, where we look at the movie adaptations to some of your favorite books. This month, we're continuing our Harry Potter series with Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, with a special appearance from our good friend, Caitlin Faith, psychology professional to the stars. Join us next time when we'll be reading A Christmas by the Sea by Melody Carlson. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I'm Sam Reiner. And I'm Lizzie Sawyer. And we hope to see you and a friend here next time.